only safety inside our bones. We're always careful, baby, when we turn things on. All through our work sites, all through our homes. We're working safely, baby, when we're in our zone. I'm Nicholas Boyles, and I'm the safety officer of Cybersync Construction. We are here because we have been getting a lot of interest in the Super Tunnel project, and we started to generate some questions online about Simerson's safety procedures um, when it comes to tunnel entry and tunnel safety. So today we're going to take you through a little bit of that. Well, first and foremost, since this is technically a permit required confined space, we have to assign an entry attendant before we can even take one foot into this space. Um, and that entry attendant will monitor uh, necessary PPE going into the site, things like your standard hard hat, your safety glasses, um, and your high visibility gear. Um, in addition, that entry tenant has to ensure that we have our radios and our PEL monitors so that our air is always being checked and we have constant radio communication with anyone on the outside in the uh, event of an emergency rescue. Diego Rodriguez, I'm the entry attendant for the Super Tunnel Project. Uh, I call every morning to the fire department, let them know we're going to be in the tunnel, and then I log all these guys in, make sure they got their radios, their PEL monitors, log them in and out, make sure everything's clean out here on the job site, make it, a, make it a safe work environment for these guys. And can just anybody be able to enter the tunnel? No, absolutely not. They need to be pre-authorized before they can come in. Can you explain that to us, what the pre-authorization process entails? They need to be trained on all the aspects of the uh, site-specific safety plan. We've got that hard hat on our noggin, got the steel toes on our feet. The PRCS plan, which is the permit required confined space, and the PRCS permit itself. Once you've been trained on those three things, um, then you can be allowed access to the tunnel, provided that you are wearing the necessary PPE. Well, as per the PRCS plan and the PRCS permit, um, whenever any entity is entering and doing work in a permanent required confined space, they need to have one of three entry plans in place. That's not all three, that's at least one of those three. Um, and right now, our entry plan is an off-site rescue plan, and we've coordinated that. Um, with Central Lyon County Fire, who just happened to have a station right down the street from us, which is convenient. Um, and in the event of any kind of rescue, which we've taken great steps to avoid, uh, we would contact them immediately. Uh, if, as a good example, if for any reason uh, any of our guys need to leave the confines of this space, which would only be in an emergency situation, they, they are required to have a tagline on them. Obviously, this is a fall protection device and they're not, they're not falling, but we want to be able to find out where they are in the event of a rescue. And we also have respirators, uh, supplied air respirators and half-face respirators available in case of a air quality event. So if any of those things were to happen, we have those emergency efforts up front, followed by it obviously calling 911 and then coordinating with Central uh, Lyon County Fire Department on their rescue efforts. And they have been out to the site and we do need to call them every day before we enter and every day when we exit. So we're checking in without and out with them. So they are always aware when we are here and what we are doing so that we can more easily coordinate with them in the event of the on-site rescue. Uh, I'm Jose Peregrina, I'm the project foreman. For the what are you going to talk to us about today? Uh, just about our turtle that we quite engineered and constructed ourselves. Uh, we got it stamped where we're supposed it's engineered to withstand 19,400 pounds per linear foot in case of any collapse. And um, we're watching where we're working, so don't drop it. Ooh. This is what we're going to be working under every five feet. Do you guys ever exit the turtle? Uh, for no reason at all. Clean it out uh, two feet at a time. Okay. So we're always under this turtle and our skate steer. And how do you get the turtle to move forward? I mean, this is a huge contraption. So uh, we 
got this engineered for us to be able to uh, push this with the machinery. And thus giving us our five feet behind this bracing for us to do the next section that we will want. We are at 45 feet, working on 50 feet. Excellent. And uh, we're gonna continue closing everything off and uh, get ready to case this a concrete. Uh, today we are digging the trench to drain all this water or have somewhere for it to drain without it compromising any of our timbers. And uh, we're going to do that by running a 12 inch SDR pipe along with a box at a drain box at 50 feet. And uh, as we keep going, we'll be adding to that drain. All right, Jacob, and what are we looking at today? Right now we're above the entrance of the Sutro Tunnel. And what are we doing here? So after we're all said and done with the, uh, the timbers that we're doing for the first 45 feet, we're going to encase this in concrete. Awesome. And what's, is anything going on top of the concrete? So we're going to uh, box out with some forms before we pour. We'll leave a void for uh, our future work of installing ventilation. And is there anything going on top of all that, or is it going to be open to the elements? No, we're going to encase this in concrete and backfill it so that there's no way for people to get in on top of this tunnel. 